Last year for the Victorian branch of the ETU, well, it was one of our biggest years. We had about 16,000 of our members out of a total of 19,000 uh, agreements come up for negotiation. We had our election year, we had blues at the D sale, and that was just uh, a few of the things we had going. But now that we have the majority of our members' uh, agreements tucked away for another three years, we've got a bit of time up our sleeve to uh, you know, put to bed those projects that we've had uh, you know, on the back burner for a while. One of the major ones that we've uh, been wanting to do for some time is to really encapsulate the history and the 110 year history, proud history of the uh, Victorian branch of the ETU. So the executive have ticked off on a budget to uh, commence the Victory and Struggle project that uh, is headed up by Shane Cahill from our communications department. We have Kenny Purden, our historian, and we've engaged Ewan, uh, who I think you'll see on the DVD, has a great history in putting these sort of projects together. So over the next six to seven months, you know, it's a large project and this will really be just a stepping stone, you know, for the years to come, but uh, we'll endeavour to encapsulate the whole proud 110 years of the Victorian branch of the ETU. And for me, it's, uh, it's our identity, it's who we are, where we've come from, our past has formulated our character. Why we are like we are, why we do what we do, why we say what we say, and why we strive for the future. You know? If we don't know what we've done in the past, then how can we value it? And it's such a rich history that should never be lost. We should never lose it because it, it doesn't predict the future but it tells us what, we, what we'll lose if we don't fight in the future for what we've already got. I'm thrilled to be involved with the ETU in the development of this historical exhibition. My um, background is in museums and exhibitions and interpretation of historical material. I've had over 30 years experience in working with Museum Victoria and State Library, building of Science Works Museum and the Immigration Museum. If you have a look at the building in North Melbourne at Arden Street, you know, and it's very, the theme that we've run for the last couple of years is that we're independent, strong and proud. And if you look at the Arden Street building, and if you get a chance, that you should really go there, is exactly that. It's the biggest building in North Melbourne. It is independent and it's very strong. And there's no doubt um, from the outside looking in that uh, it's the ETU building. There's some large signs out there. and The signage from the outside is, is pretty good. Uh, however, when you go inside, I wouldn't say we've dropped the ball, but uh, with the exception of the honour boards that we have in the foyer, you know, we really don't encapsulate the 110-year the history that we do have. Now, I think it's a failing if you, uh, if you forget your history or you don't recognise your history. I think it's uh, a, a great failing. Electricity was about 20 years old when uh, at the turn of the 20th, 20th century, uh, and 91 of the 147 electricians that were in Victoria at the time decided it was time they formed a union. And they created a poster and put it around town and said, let's meet and, oh, and want all electrical men to come together and let's talk about whether we um, form a union. And they did that. On the 13th of May, 1902, we formed a union. Um, a fellow called uh, Andy McPhail went up to the uh, Trades Hall and met with the Trades Hall Council Committee and said, we've now formed a union. I'm the Union Secretary, and that was the start of our life as a, as a union. At that stage we were called the Electrical Association. During the first decade of the 20th century we became known as the Victorian Electrical Trades Union. 1911 we said it's time we were federal, it's time we, we went national because we've got electricians that are crossing borders, we've got um, you know, wages and conditions that need to travel with the electricians as they grow. And so we approached New South Wales and New South Australia and Tassie said we need to federate. They were a bit reluctant but we, we showed some leadership and we went to the um, Commonwealth uh, courts and said we want to federate. 1912 we became the Federated Electrical Trades Union of Australia. And we were able to then go in there and say now there's no reason why we can't be licensed. We should be licensed because we've had many examples in the past where electricians have been put in precarious positions. We've got people who are not uh, expertly trained and fiddling with stuff that kills you. And in fact we've got plenty of evidence of blokes being killed because they're not trained properly in electricity. So uh, this trade should be licensed. And after a long five year fight, we won that fight and we were instrumental in setting up the uh, licensing board of the SEC. In the war, for example, we worked very closely with the um, 
the, king, the, the Curtin government because we had a lot of, uh, when there was the dilution of labour, when they were bringing in um, non-tradespeople, semi-skilled people and making them tradespeople because they just needed all that work, we were finding that uh, um, ratbag employers were undercutting the good ones, the real employers, and employee are uh, winning tenders based on the fact that they were using cheap labour. And we as the ETU approached the federal government and we said this is not on, you can't do this. And we became an integral part of the manpower organisation of the First World War. In fact, um, Jock Innes, who was one of our um, secretaries of the past at that time, he, he, he was in the war uh, and he was uh, invalided out after a year and he became a manpower, like a manpower organiser if you like. And he went around making sure that uh, the people who were going to get jobs, who were proper tradespeople and stuff like that, working very closely with the government. In uh, Our history with the, with the Labour Party goes back as far as we existed. I can tell you that way back in the 1920s, we were out there bitching because the Labour Party, we said, it's just not representing the working man, it's just not, and we made lots of squawky noises. By 1930, we had gotten together and had a meeting of all ETU members, not just an executive and not just a, uh, uh, a state council. In fact, there weren't state councils in that days, so we weren't big enough. But we all got together and said, we want to get out of this union, we, uh, out of this relationship with the ALP. It's just not representing the workers. Why should we give our affiliation fees? A story we, we can relate to now. Why should we give our affiliation fees to a, uh, a political organisation that's not representing us? And we lost it by one voting. In fact, it was voted that we would get out of it, but the Union Secretary of the day, Snowy Henderson, said, listen fellas, I'd like to amend that proposal and say, let's disaffiliate for six months, just as a matter of protest. Because, in his opinion, we were better off fighting from within than from without. And he, and he, he swayed the day, and we disaffiliated for six months. And uh, after the six months we came back, but we ended up with a good working relationship with, um, with the Labour Party. In the 50s and 60s, in fact, we very much sided in the 50s before the, uh, the big split, uh, which cost the Labour government uh, power for the next 22 years. We were on the side of um, Dr. Ebbett uh, against the, the, the Coleman Barry uh, group, which split away from the ALP and <coughs> eventually became the DLP. Down in the Latrobe Valley, they were very much group oriented. Back here in the city, uh, they weren't. And there was many a heated discussion over uh, in those sorts of, um, as he, is, he, is he Catholic, is he Protestant, is he group or is he not? Is he a fellow traveler, as they say, which was uh, communist sympathizers. And we had plenty of communists in our union. In fact, union presidents were communists, but it never stopped us from representing our members. For me, one of the biggest decisions we made and the best decisions we made was in, 19, in the 1980s. When Kelly wanted to uh, create his super unions and he created this blueprint where he's going to amalgamate 300 plus unions down to a few. And we were going to be sucked up into that. And uh, our members said, no thanks. We are ETU, we stay in ETU. We're not going to be swallowed up by somebody else. And uh, our national body was all for it. And we said, no, I'm not interested. We ended up, we ended up some time later amalgamating with uh, the plumbers and others and into what we like to call SIPU. <laughs> but we maintained, within that federation, we seem to have maintained our own independence. We're still now ETU, no longer, uh, uh, no longer is our identity threatened. We will always be ETU. Members have been telling our organisers or our officials, well, I'm not, I'm not SIPU. I'm not something else, I am ETU and I'm staying ETU. This is me, this is my identity, this is where I came from, this is my history. I'm not giving up my identity for somebody else's political motives. Get stuck. So uh, the executive have ticked off on uh, the Struggle and Victory project and we've got Shane and Ewan and Kenny Purden heading that up. But they can't do it by themselves, we need your help and particularly the honorary members. You, know, you are the living history of this, uh, this, not exactly for 110 years, but probably for the last 30, 40 and 50 years. So if you have any old ETU magazines, if you have any old flyers, any tools, any mass meeting uh, flyers that may have come out, any, any history or any 
uh, snapshot of the history of the last 110 years. You know, we'd like to have it and we'd put it in the uh, the project and you, you might walk into the floor of the uh, the Arden Street building and uh, either see yourself or uh, that part of history as part of our, our project. And I'm really looking forward to working with them and in fact um, with many of you in the room today. Hopefully um, we can get some, some historical material from some of you. There is a bit around, um, but we'd love to get our hands on some more um, heritage material to put on display in the showcases at ETU headquarters. And um, um, we all hope you'll be uh, excited and thrilled to see the display that will be open uh, later this year. So if you can help us in any way, get in touch with Kenny Purden or Shane Carhill and uh, we'll try and launch the project about November uh, this year.